stage today we have julia and pam and brenda and bill and jeff and up at the booth our production team rory and kurt and then all the volunteers who are working from home today to help make this happen lisa armstrong michelle benoy allison martinson jennifer Berger. thank you so much all right we've got a few housekeeping items to tend to as we get started here First of all, we need to say a huge thank you to our great team that showed up yesterday uh, to help do a wonderful, successful Ruby's Pantry. We had 44 volunteers, a bunch, and I think we did something like 29, 30,000 pounds of food, baking a couple thousand pounds of potatoes, so it was a busy day, but a great day. Over 200 families served. I'm thinking, looking at all the masks that we see here, we might think of doing like a fun new competition or contest, say, name that servant. Because it's hard to tell who these people are, but man, they're working hard. So thank you, everybody. See you again next month. All right. If you haven't already, please, sometime during the worship service today, if you're watching this morning, head on over to our Facebook page and say hi, so we can say hi back to you. We always love being able to do that a couple times during the worship service. And we also love to hear your prayer requests. Uh, what, is, what is on your heart? What's, uh, what's tugging at you today? What, what kinds of things are, are 
you're thinking about, wondering about, asking God about, our code today, always up in the upper right-hand corner, Tia's and Tom, Pia's and Pony, 01. So head on over to our app and hit the Slido tile or just go to slido.com and share those requests with us. Worship 2020. You may remember as the pandemic started back in March, we did a midweek offering of worship. We're looking at getting that started again soon, possibly as early as this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Watch back our website, Facebook page. We'll let you know if that happens. We need to make sure we've got a team that can come together and pull that off. So stay tuned for that. If you have never joined us for coffee after worship, we would invite you to come and try uh, connecting on Zoom. There's the information that you will need right there. And again, that'll be at the close of worship up on the screen again. Uh, love to have you stop by and let us know what's happening in your life these days when we can't meet in person together for worship, but we can meet online. So do that. We'd love to see you. Talking points. That was to be the message series we kicked off today, but then the coronavirus uh, interrupted our plans a bit. Pastor Aaron, known as Sturgy to many of us, uh, he was diagnosed this past week, so we had to come up with a plan B for today. So here's plan B. We're going to talk about one day at a time. God's plan for how God wants to provide for us in a pandemic and beyond a pandemic. And along with that, I want to share the results of a, a little retreat of renewal time that Joel and I just finished up yesterday, 36 hours of coming together and asking the question, how can we build into our marriage and strengthen our relationship as husband and wife uh, as we navigate our way through this brand new uncharted territory? I'm going to share with you a few things that uh, we discovered and are recommitting to uh, in the months ahead. That's our message. Again, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of all the team here in-house and those who are connecting at home this morning. Uh, we're just so glad that you can be here today because we do all of this, this worship, for one purpose. We want to bring you today, in this time of worship, into the presence of a holy and loving God. That's it, a God who knows you, who loves you, uh, who earnestly desires to have a relationship with you that you might follow him and know how, how incredibly rich an experience life can be when lived out in the fullness and the richness of his grace. Uh, we say this often at Living Water, God didn't create us, you and me, for life all by ourselves. He created us. He built us for community. And we believe in this next hour that the Holy Spirit is going to be uniting our hearts, bringing us together, and enabling us to do what we do best, come together as community and offer ourselves, all of ourselves, to God as an offering of worship. And that God in return would bless that gathering by giving you, me, what we need to be filled this week. The courage, the hope, the love, the grace to love God, to love people, to serve others through Christ. So thanks for being living water this morning, wherever you are, and we pray that this next hour would be a blessing to you and to the world that God so loves. Call to worship. Here we go. Each morning, God's grace awakens us. Each evening, God's peace cradles us. Everyone, compassion is our constant companion as we go through work, school, the day. In every moment, God is present with us. God whispers words which can change our lives. Justice is our faithful teacher, pointing to where we can carry out fairness. When we find ourselves groping in the shadows, God's light will provide a way home. Everyone, we turn the corner and hope is waiting for us. We return home and find a feast prepared. Amen. Let's sing.
time for our confession of sin. I want to preface it with a question. What's weighing you down this morning? Maybe a lot of things, obligations, concerns, worries. One of the things that we know as followers of Jesus is that sin is one of the heaviest weights that we carry with us. Time to clear the deck and give that to God. We've got enough to carry around without adding that to it. And God is more than ready to take that from us and remove it, Scripture says, as far as the east is from the west. So let's do that now, shall we? We know, despite our sincere efforts to live in God's way, that all too easily we slip off the path to the kingdom. Trusting that God will answer our prayers and forgive us, let us confess our sins as we pray together. Everyone, forgive us, giver of rest. Enable us to stop putting you to the test so we can open our hypocritical hearts to your healing touch of compassion and hope. As Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has given all for us, may we give ourselves to you confidently, completely, faithfully. Amen. Hear the good news. The one who created goodness and beauty is also the one who shows no partiality, but offers grace and peace to all. Everyone, God has heard our prayers and done the very thing we asked, forgiven us, healed us, restored us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Time for the peace, and here it comes. Thank you so much, Janine. Yes, the peace of the Lord be with you all. We encourage you now at this time to share peace with those who are in your bubble, your safe zone, to text a word of peace to those a little further beyond. And if you so like, give a call and share peace to those uh, that you wish to do so verbally. Time for a check-in and say hello. We're going to do that in just a second. Before we do... Uh, we have our offering time. I was thinking about our offering here at Living Water and what it is as a church. W what we're basically saying in this time is, God, we trust you. So here's the question I have for you as you consider making your offering this morning to ask yourself, your family, how much do we trust God? God invites us to lean in and trust in this time of offering. Trust Him with our lives, trust Him with our families, and in this time, being very explicit with our finances. There's three options there. Texting, our app, uh, on our website. They're all the same. They're all easy, simple ways for us to say, God, yes, I trust you. Thank you in advance for your gifts. And we do have some folks who've been checking in, so a hello back to all of you, to Jennifer Mike and Mitchell Berger, Dwayne Olson, Gary Landsworth. Gary, thank you so much for cutting the lawn all this time. Hopefully with the snow this week and frost, uh, there'll be a little less grass growth here. You can get some deserved time off. Uh, Duane and Michelle Benoy, Judy Olson, Penny Budden, Elaine Rasmussen, Barb Johnson, Kim Weber, Sue Ramsas. Sue, love those pictures of your house. Moving in soon, that's good to see. Let's see, Jim and Carna Mortimer, Tom Wright, Tom and Carla Moon, Jen Goodlett and family, James Adams, Kay Stowell Payne, Tina and Dave Henningsen. Guys, we're praying for you. Know that. Randy Hill. Pete and Lindsay and Hattie Kolpeck are Coffee Hour hosts. Yuritza Hansen. Beth and Mike Justin and family. 
Susan Kroll. Hello there, North Dakota. Thanks for all your hospitality to us the past week here. Jill and Taya Lenhart. Lisa and Jay Foles and family. Sally Schieffer. Nicole Lauf. Sarah, Josh, Connor, Eleanor, and William Husa. Kathy Peterson over in Minnesota. Nice job yesterday leading us in Ruby's Pantry. Kathy, thank you. Jessica Crado. Stay healthy there, all you nurses on the front lines. Jill Hitpes, Christine Ebner. Chris, thank you so much for being the worship leader while I was away last week. You did an awesome job. Thank you. Sabrina Hentz, Darren Lentz, Amber Nori, Brenda Chernowski, Darlene Kershinsky, Connie and Brian Larson from South Dakota, Jill Viltz, excuse me, Jim Viltz, sorry about that, Judy Hover, Lynn Felt, Brandy Kershinsky, and Jill Kastner. Keep checking in. It's just good to have you all with us this morning. Time to pray. Lord, keep your family faithful to you. Everyone, protect us from evil so that we may serve you by doing good to the glory of your name. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, children's time. We have a special treat for you, put together by Lisa Armstrong. So in advance, Lisa, thank you for your collection and gift. Children's time, here we are. fun. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yes, we miss you, kiddos, and can't wait for the day when you're back here and we're all together physically doing church and doing life together. You who are loved by the Lord, grace and peace to you all. I want to begin with a Bible reading from God's Word, the book of Exodus in our First Testament, chapter 16. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. 
In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they needed. Here ends the reading for today. It was one of those unbelievably hot days. Our family, we were packed into our minivan, and we were driving from the Chippewa Valley over to the Twin Cities, we got into traffic, we got into construction, it was incredibly congested, traffic was slow, everybody was irritated, nobody was in a very good mood. Now, before I go any further, let me just say this, I, I really dread going to Minneapolis cities. It's nothing against the cities, it's just that in the summertime, especially that's about the last place I want to go. All that gr glass, asphalt, steel, noise, smell. I want to be going the opposite direction, up north, where it's clear, where there are trees, where there's water, where I can swim. So I was in a bit of a grumpy mood as well, just from the very start. At any rate, we're there. We're stuck in traffic. We're sucking in of all this exhaust that we can smell from all these different vehicles that were lined up behind, especially the one right in front of us. It was this big old RV, this big Winnebago. It was diesel powered. The diesel engine was not very well tuned up. It was just spitting all this smoke at us. And there we sat, inhaling fumes, getting grumpier, getting more ornery, kids arguing, spouse sighing, me thinking, how much longer do I need to live in this purgatory? When I noticed on the back of this motorhome a bumper sticker, one of many actually, but it was a bumper sticker, one I'd seen hundreds of times and really hadn't paid much attention to, but there it was. It just kind of jumped out at me with these like big letters in black and white print and it said this, one day at a time. That was it, one day at a time. Like I say, I've, I've probably seen that a uh, hundred times before. I read it, didn't really pay attention to it, but that day I looked at it and it just phew, jumped out at me, one day at a time. Bill. Bill was a guy who had it all. He had a degree in finance, and he headed to New York to play the markets, to work the markets, and after some learning time, trial and error, he, he figured it out. He had this natural knack. He knew when the stocks were starting to crest, and he would jump on board, and then just before they hit their peak, he knew it was time to sell, and he would sell, and he was making a lot of money. And not just that, he was gathering a lot of friends around him, too, who wanted to ride on his coattails. He was good. He was very good. In fact, he was so good that he soon had this large crowd of people following him everywhere he went, and they wanted to thank him. And they did. They went out at night after the room closed and everybody cleared out, they went out and partied and drank and celebrated all of Bill's successes 
which was not only putting money in his pockets, but theirs, too. Well, this pattern had continued for a while, and pretty soon, Bill found himself going out not just in the evening for drinks, but at noon, too, and sometimes not coming back, just staying there and continuing to drink. He was drinking a lot, and his family noticed. His friends noticed, too. His wife was the first to point out that this was not something, a, a pattern, a lifestyle that could be sustained much longer. But Bill said, ah, no worries, I've got this, and he kept on. His friends began pulling him aside and saying, Bill, we're concerned too. We really think that you need to just slow down a bit. But Bill said, ah, no problem, I got it. He kept this up for years, actually, and, and somehow managed to hold it all together until the market crashed. And it went down steep, that market correction, and it took Bill and all of Bill's friends right with him. It was a hard time. Bill, though, his way of coping was to just drink more. He drank, he drank, and he kept drinking. He was, he was hardly sober. He was more drunk than he was sober, and his body was taking a toll. He was getting so sick that he finally, unable to function, made his way to his doctor, who sat him down and said, Bill, I need to tell you this. You will not live for the rest of the year if you don't make a radical change. You need to quit drinking. You need to quit drinking now. Bill took the advice. He left, and he tried quitting drinking. He tried quitting for a week. He tried quitting for a month uh, to no success. He'd try a little bit, and then he'd fail. He'd make it a day or two or three, uh, almost a week, and, and then he'd fall off the wagon. He couldn't do it. He was about to give up when he realized he was biting off more than he could chew. See, he couldn't stay sober for a week. He couldn't stay sober for two days, three days. But you know what he could do? He could stay sober one day. And that's what he did, one day at a time. He stayed sober one day, made it to the end of the day, and then took off and did the next day. And the next. Not two days at a time, not three days at a time, just one day at a time. And he soon found he could rack up seven days in a row and he had a week. And then he, pretty soon he had a month. And he shared this. He shared this. And that became part of what is now known as AA. Visit an AA meeting and you'll learn all about Bill's story and how to live life. Stay sober one day at a time. We just heard a moment ago a story about the people of Israel. They're walking through the desert. They have been relieved from captivity in Egypt where they had spent hundreds of years, literally. God's chosen people had been enslaved. Now they were free. They were headed through the desert to the promised land, all several hundred thousand of them. But there was one problem. They were in a desert. A desert, a real desert, which means there's issues like water and food and shelter. Food was the issue at hand in our reading today. There was not enough to eat. The people were hungry, and they were grumbling to God. We're hungry. We'd rather go back there and be enslaved than be with you here in the desert heading to this promised land, whatever that is. The Lord... The Lord in his patience hears their grumbling, and he provides for them. In the evening, he sends quail, these birds that they can pick up so that they have meat to eat at night. And then the morning, he sends this white, flaky stuff. The people go out there, and Moses says, there it is. It's your bread. 
God is providing you bread. They walk around and they look at this white stuff. They've never seen this before. They, they reach down, they pick it up, and they hold it up, and they say, what is this? In Hebrew, that's manna. It literally means, what is this? What is this? It's God's way of providing for them. You see, God had a plan. God's plan was this, that they would be provided for one day at a time. Because the bread came with this provision. They could go out in the morning and pick here, pick here, pick here, pick as much of this as they wanted to. They could get all they needed for that day. Pick any more than that, try to store it up, put it in a basket, save it for the next day, go and pick enough in the morning for a whole week so that you wouldn't have to do the rest of the week, and something happened. Kind of gross, actually. It got all wormy and smelly and rotten. Now you think, okay, why? Why, why would it do that? Why, why wouldn't God just say, here, take a whole week's worth? was all part of God's plan. You see, God, God wanted more than anything to have a relationship with his people, each and every one of those hundreds of thousands going through the desert. He wanted them to rely on him each and every day for what they needed. God said, I promise to provide for you. I promise to give to you but it needs to be on my terms because I want you to know that I am here for you each and every day. Come to me each day. Walk out your tent and gather up what you need and I will provide for you. You and I will do this journey together. You do the walking, I'll provide the food. That's how God did it. That's how God planned it. And that's how they made it to their destination. One day at a time. Our Bible reading then leads us next to where Jill and I were this past week. We were out in North Dakota for a few days back in our home country. That's my dog, faithful dog Sally, with her catch there. She's a good, faithful retriever. We were out bird hunting, her and I, for a few days. Jill and the girls, they were there with helping Grandma take care of Grandpa, as well as readying the home for the change of seasons, which comes. On the way back to Wisconsin this week, we stopped, Jill and I did, in Hudson for a mini retreat before heading home yesterday. One of the biggest reasons for the retreat was this. We, we knew we needed to take a little time with each other just to check in with each other. Like you, none of us has ever experienced a pandemic before. We're doing this uh, like you for the very first time. It's our first rodeo, and, and, and both of us were sensing, you know what, it is really time for us to stop and take a moment and, and take the temperature of our relationship and ask a really important question. How, how are we going to continue to stay strong as a couple? Now, what do we all know? What we're doing now, this is hard, isn't it? This is hard. It's really hard living in a pandemic. Ask anybody in healthcare. Ask anybody in the school system. Ask anybody in business, uh, a nonprofit. Ask any parent. Uh, ask anybody. We are all facing challenges and questions that we have never had to face before. Uh, uh, in addition to a future that, that seems almost impossible to prepare for. With all these stressors piling on incrementally, we, we wanted to be deliberate, Jill and I did, about, about asking and attempting to ask, answer that question. How do, we, how do we keep our primary relationship, our marriage, strong under all that stress? What I want to do is close this morning with, with what we came up with. 
uh, 10, our top 10. Uh, I suppose you could call them signposts, um, mile markers that we gleaned from a couple sources. One was a, a blog post by Carrie Newhoff, and the second was a book on burnout by Emily and Amelia Nagoski. Ten things that we as a couple realized we want to keep on our dashboard. Not ten things we're going to do every day or every week, but just ten things we want to hold out there in front of us to help us stay strong and healthy in this pandemic and beyond it. Uh, we're going to title it this, 10 Ways for Living That Will Help Us Live Strong Into Tomorrow. And by the way, Lisa is going to post this on Facebook, a little chart diagram that Jill drew. She gets the writing credits today. And that'll be on our Facebook page before the end of worship, so you don't need to write these down. First is this, read scripture. Yeah, we need to go down to a deep well right now, don't we? Every single day I go to scripture because here's what I've learned as a pastor in this pandemic. I can't give what I don't have. And every single day I need to go down into scripture as deep as I possibly can. I need to drill down and 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 plumb the depths of God's grace and God's love and be reminded of what a strong and caring and compassionate God we have. Drill deep. Go to Scripture on a regular basis whenever that works for you in your day. Number nine, be physically active. What do we know? If we stay in one place and just get stuck, it's so easy for our brains to get stuck and just clogged up, right? Be physically active. Keep moving. How do you like to move? You like to dance? You like to do yoga? What, what, what is your thing? Running? Walking? There's so many ways to move. And so many times of the day we can move. Maybe it's for five minutes. Maybe it's a half hour at your lunch break. Maybe it's getting up in the morning. Maybe it's in the evening. Be physically active and do it in a way that fills your soul. Offer hope. I think more than ever, we need to remind each other that we follow, serve a God of hope. Look in the faces and the eyes of the people that you see every day. Who, who do you think could use a little extra nudge of hope, a reminder that God is good, that, that God is light, that there is hope in the world, and it comes from a source that we know through Jesus Christ. Offer hope, encouragement, praise. Seven, participate in positive social interaction. You know, this can be just as simple as, as when you're at a restaurant going up to the person who is, is the cashier or taking your order and offering a kind word. Make it positive. Whatever it is, make it positive. Share something uplifting, encouraging, acting back to offering hope. Bind wounds. My goodness, we know there is plenty of brokenness in our world today. What would it be like if we were the ones who looked around for those who were hurting, for those who were needing, those who are wounded, and offered a word of healing. Entering those conversations, especially difficult conversations, by, by asking ourselves, what's our goal? Is my goal to win this conversation, to win the argument, to come out on top, to dominate, or, or am I here as a healing presence, the presence of Christ in this environment, in this situation? Be a wound binder, not a wound maker. <laughs> Number five, laugh. <laughs> not just a light laugh, not a, a laugh from up here, but a deep belly laugh. Allow yourself to breathe. You know, what have we learned through this pandemic? Have you heard that dentists are now dealing with many of us who have clenched teeth problems? We're grinding our teeth at night. We, we need to laugh, and, and laughter enables that stress to, to just leak, pour, gush out of us. 
to be replaced with health. Laugh. Find ways, good ways, healthy ways that allow you to laugh. Number four, hug and hold. Not just hug. This is hug and hold. Now, this may be a challenge for many of us, especially if you're a short hugger. This is called long hugging. There's actually a name for this. Did you know that? And here's why. It takes 20 seconds for you to actually, in a hug, relax enough for those endorphins in your brain to come spilling out and to leak into your body. You ever hugged anybody for 20 seconds? That's a long time. If you haven't, I want to challenge you to try it this week. You can do it. All right? Down to number three. Oops. Did I get that one already? Yep. Okay. Walk away. Don't start a fire. This kind of gets back to what's our intention? Can we be a presence of healing? If you see something going south, sometimes the best way is to not engage just to walk away. Where does burnout come from? Sometimes it comes from getting a little too close to too many fires, right? Amen? If you see fires starting, sometimes the best way is to walk away. And the last one, the most fun one to me, express creativity and imagine. Let your brain go free. Allow, allow yourself to be creative in this time. What's something that you've wanted to make? Something you've wanted to do? Something you've thought of, of writing or building or doing? Take some time to do that. Surprise yourself. Let that right brain go and, and who knows what you might create. Church, wouldn't we all love to peek into the future and, and see what 2021, 2022 looks like? I mean, we have so many questions as we look down the road and wonder, okay, what's coming? What's ahead? You know, while God's word does not describe or, or predict in detail all those kinds of things of what's going to happen, the where, the why, it does offer us clarity in one important area, the how. God will provide for us, and here's how God is going to do it. Ready? One day at a time. How will you spend this day? How will you spend this week? I've shared with you 10 things that Jill and I are now making, marking as priorities in our life through the remainder of this pandemic and beyond. It's on our fridge. It's on our bathroom mirror. We've given copies to our girls. We've made copies for our family members. And I'm sure if you text us, email us, she'd be happy to send one to you too. Just ask. Sorry, Jill. I'm putting you to work here, but thanks in advance. Yes, we're taking this seriously. And today, I want to invite you to join us. The list, as I mentioned, it's on our Facebook page here before the end of worship. And here's what I'm asking you to do. To head over there, print it out, copy it, and lean into, lean into one of those markers, one of those signposts before the end of this week. Lean in to God, to the God who right now is already leaning in towards you. What do we call that? That's gospel. That's grace, right? Leaning into you and wanting more than anything to have a relationship with you today and tomorrow. Doing it the way God has planned from the very beginning, inviting us to trust him each day and every day one day at a time. How will you do it? How will you lean in and trust? How will you grow in your faith? How will you come through this pandemic stronger and with a closer relationship to God than when you entered? Let's pray about that right now, shall we? Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for this day. Before we even thought of stepping out of bed this morning, we know this, you were already out ahead of us. You were planning how you were going to provide for us, each one of us, this day. Our needs, our, our hopes, the challenges that are in front of us that we're facing, the problems, 
you were already there saying, okay, I'm going to give her, I'm going to give him this. So God, in advance, for equipping us and providing for us, we say thank you. What a relief it is to, to serve and worship a God who is that loving, who is that caring. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our fears, our worries, our hopes, our dreams. With so much change and uncertainty in the world, at times it can feel so overwhelming. So Lord, help us to know that each and every day you are with us. Uh, even when we can't see or feel your presence, you are with us. You invite us to, at each turn to, to look to you for strength, for hope, for provision, for purpose, and to be reminded that in spite of our chaotic and, and crazy world, you have not left the building. You have not left the world. You're here. As our worship team sang this morning so well and reminded us so profoundly, you love the world, and that love has not stopped. You keep inviting us, and we thank you for that. Each and every day, lean into your invitation of love, knowing that you're already leaning back, extending your hand, wanting us, pleading with us, begging us to grasp it and to join you in this journey of faith. We share now these prayers. Please watch over and protect and provide for all those, Lord, on the front lines this week. Nurses and doctors, cashiers and grocery stockers, child care providers, teachers, all school staff. Hold them close, dear Lord. Thank you for showing up in such a big way at yesterday's Ruby's Pantry. What an awesome God you are. We praise you for the privilege of serving over 200 families with healthy and nutritious food. God, we thank you for our great leaders, too, who make all that happen. We pray prayers this morning for Pastor Aaron and for his family for a speedy recovery. We offer prayers today for our mother, mother-in-law, as she goes through some further testing for a new developing health issue. Lord, watch over her and that whole family and keep them close to your heart. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your love and your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Receive this blessing. May the love of God surround you. May the grace of God astound you. May the hope of God ground you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Let's say.
Check in back with you, Gary Odenbright. Thanks so much for joining us in worship. Don Berkulin, Sally Erickson, Sherry Cavanaugh. Hey there, Lady Smith. Don and Craig Bennett and family down south, Arcadia Land. Good to have you with us. Jeannie Cooper from Eau Claire. Karen Jenkinson, Anna Marie Ritzdow, Dorothy Marquardt, and last but not least, Julie Bruntglick. Thank you so much for being with us today in worship. Now for our dismissal. Here it is. Go in peace to love and serve others through Christ. Thanks be to God. All right. Again, thank you for being church. Hope to see you right back here next week. Right up now is coffee time. And please join us. Grab your cup and let's hear from you. Thanks. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger.